Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and in this video I'm going to talk about unusual phenotypic ratio 1, 4 to 6 to 4 to 1 and this is going to be my sort of fourth uh, video in a row about unusual phenotypic ratios I made uh, many videos about uh, classical T-hybrid cross where we can um, observe a phenotypic ratio as follows 9 to 3, to 3, to 1. You can check my uh, recently uploaded video where I made um, also videos about uh, unusual phenotypic ratios as such as uh, 15 to 1 and 13 to 3 and uh, 9 to 7. And in this video, I'm going to talk about this unusual distribution of um, phenotypes. And right away, I want to tell you that uh, this is going to be a modification of this classical dehybrid cross. So if you add 9 to 3 to 3 to 1, you're going to get 16. Here, if we add 15 plus 1, we also get 16. And here, if we add uh, 13 to 3, also we'll get 16. And here, we also get 16. And if we add all these numbers, we are also going to get 16. So, this uh, gives us right away a hint that uh, two genes involved here. And uh, we can get maximum distribution of trait. Of course, if uh, these two genes would be both heterozygous, so gene A would be represented by two alleles, uh, dominant and recessive, and gene B also would be uh, represented by two uh, alleles, dominant and recessive. So this is going to be genotype of one parent, uh, and we have to cross this genotype with another parent, who also going to be heterozygous for both genes. And uh, in uh, this example, as you see, we have distribution that resembles following distribution. So distribution would be as follows. So uh, 1 would be here, 4 would be here, 6 would be here, 4 again here, and 1 again here. And uh, this is classical distribution of many, many traits. Uh, for example, uh, how tall people in your class. We would have classical bell shape distribution. So, uh, we would have very few people who is going to be very small. We also would have a few people who is going to be very tall. And most people would be of the normal height. Very few traits are as distinctive as uh, on this distribution uh, table. Because uh, what is our phenotype, as you remember, uh, phenotype uh, is genotype plus environment, plus environmental influence. This is what makes our phenotype. Very few traits we have where environment doesn't have effect. For example, our uh, blood, our blood type uh, is not influenced by environment. If you AB no matter in which climate you live, no matter what food you uh, eat, still uh, you would be of the blood group AB. So, uh, looking at this table, I also have another hint for you that this is additive trait. That every single allele here would add something to the trait. So, uh, for example, uh, let's say that each dominant allele would add for the plant um, height 
uh, 10 centimeters and the basic uh, minimum uh, set of the alleles would be um, small a small a and small b small b if we would say that um, this set of alleles would give 40 centimeters of the plant height and each dominant allele would give uh, plus 10 centimeters. So for example this genotype here would be 10 plus 10 to this uh, basic height of the plant. So this plant would be 60 centimeters tall. 40 centimeters plus 2 dominant additive alleles that would add extra 10 centimeters to this uh, phenotype which is uh, trait which is uh, tallness of the plant so once again if we would cross two such parents that is going to be heterozygous for both genes we are going to get uh, following um, gametes so the first variant would be capital A and capital B so capital A and capital B second variant capital A and small b capital A and small b third variant small a and capital B and the last variant would be small a and small b small a and small b and because second parent also has the same genotype that means that second parent also would produce the same type of the gametes. So capital A and capital B, capital A and small b, small a and capital B and small a, small b. Now when we build a simple Punnett square for by 4 we would see what uh, genotypes we can get and by the way when we have additive trait genotype equals phenotype as I said this is uh, rarely happens in real life because most of the traits would be influenced by uh, by environment and we would see more smooth uh, bell-shaped curve like this on this picture. So here in the first cell we would have capital A, capital A and capital B, capital B, capital A, capital A here and capital B, small b here, capital A, small a here, capital B, capital B and capital A small a here, capital B small b. I will speed up a video in order to save a time. Now let's take a look at our table and for example this genotype happens here only once, only one genotype where we have all alleles which are going to be dominant. So this is would be our uh, one in ratio. Now let's search how many uh, genotypes we have where we have three dominant alleles and one recessive allele and this is going to be one and genotype here means phenotype also two three and four. So now our ratio one to four and by the way uh, the phenotype of this plant would be 80 centimeters so, so uh, 40 centimeters plant plus four dominant uh, alleles which at each one 10 centimeters so this would be 80 centimeters plant. Here we see uh, plant with uh, three dominant alleles that means 40 plus 30 would be 70 centimeters 
So, and now let's look for the uh, phenotype that is going to be prevailing where we would have two dominant alleles and two recessive alleles. So, one is here, another one here, another one here. Here is another one, so we are looking for six such uh, genotypes and genotype here means phenotype and as you see this is uh, our distribution 1 to 4 to 6 so we would have six plants in the following generation. This is not absolute number of course, this is just a ratio that uh, we expect that uh, 6 out of 16 would belong to this uh, phenotype. And now uh, let's find out uh, and uh, phenotype of this plant would be 40 plus 20, so 60 centimeters. And let's now find uh, plants uh, where we would find only one dominant allele. And here is the first one. Here would be the second one, third one, and fourth one. Only one dominant allele, uh, which would add only 10 centimeters. So these plants would be 40 centimeters tall. So this is going to be also four in our distribution of genotypes and phenotypes. When all alleles are going to be recessive, we expect uh, that plant would be 40 centimeters tall. So as you see, this is our distribution that we start today, 1 to 4 to 6 to 4 to 1, and this reflects a distribution of genotypes as a result of the dehybrid cross, and genotype, uh, when we talk about additive trait, means phenotype. So this is also going to be distribution of the phenotypes. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. Share this video with your classmates and see you in the next video. Goodbye.